through calculations that in fact the economics stacks up. There's almost nothing you can't do in engineering if you spend enough, but this is economically viable. And then to actually get into the detailed design of components and show that the, a storage container can be operated thousands of times, can be filled and emptied thousands of times and still work. Initiative, accepted project, so that already looks good. And I opened it up and I got as far as line one and just said Yahoo. In terms of location for where we'll put the offshore object, I have no idea. Energy store like this really can operate that many times in situ. These are the two bags. Uh, so I don't have names for them yet, but I'm trying to think of what would be a good name. This is the culmination of uh, a story that's been running for quite some time, a simple idea that maybe you could store large amounts of energy in bags under the water, using the water around the bags to hold that energy in. Yeah, ready for the water hit. Yeah, okay, where you go, Steve. Just down the line until you spot it, and then, and then you can uh, keep to one side of it. Basically, it's under the wheelhouse of the boat for orientation. Uh, yeah, we, we put it in Friday two weeks ago. That was the first time it had been in seawater. We took it out again the same day because it got a rip in it from, uh, from some work on the deck. You see where that was coming from, Steve? Yeah, How big is that hole? Oh, of course, that's a quite a big rip. That's like sort of what, an old money an inch or more? Uh, we patch it up and put it back in again, and that's, that's quite an exciting phase also because we're showing for the first time that you can cycle this energy bag. That's starting to fill, would you say? Just job for us to tell. Um, we've got a few teething problems with instrumentation and some fuses that are blowing, but essentially we're in the business now of cycling an energy bag, demonstrating that you can store compressed air under the water and, uh, and really showing that this is feasible, this is coming. Right, this is the final stage of the whole project. Um, we've actually got the energy bag in the water already, but we put it down with divers. And uh, we need to show that you can put it down in a much more clever way than using divers. And the thing behind here is that clever way. So this is a bit of a monster made out of steel. It's about the same size as the energy bag itself that we've got up in Orkney. Well, I call it a ballast bean because if you look at it when it's finished, it will look like a, a, a bean-shaped thing made out of steel with a pole running up the middle. And from the outside, it's actually very like an energy bag upside down made out of steel. And it uses exactly the same principles to design this that you use to design the energy bag, which is uh, quite useful. You don't have to develop any new maths. And what we're doing here is we're lashing together or welding together very carefully uh, a steel container that will be at least almost watertight. And we're going to attach the energy bag to the top of it in relatively shallow water. We're going to fill that thing with gravel so that it's, it's very heavy. We're going to blow the water out of it with a hose from the top so that that has rock and air in it. And together with the energy bag, the combination will be buoyant. It will float, only just break the surface. And then we'll tow the combination to site and we'll let the water back into this ballast bean here. Uh, and the result will be that it will sink again quite, quite briskly with a net force of about 25 tonnes plenty there to hold it right down to the bottom. And if we want to get it back up again, which we have to, um, we blow the air back into it again, the combination comes back up and we tow it back to the shore. It came about from a conversation that started with uh, an electricity company who liked the idea of the energy bag, but they said there's no way to hold it down cheaply. And th that electricity company tried to persuade me from their experience with the oil industry that it cost 20,000 pounds a ton to hold down stuff underwater. And if it really did cost that, the energy bag idea is dead. So I had to find a way. It was, it was essential to find a way to do it cheaper. Uh, now, I need to be able to do it at about 500 pounds a ton. By the time we're finished here, that's going to be a bit more than 500 pounds a ton. But this is the first time we've done it. So uh, we all know that if, if we get our, our calculators and slide rules out and figure out uh, slick ways to manufacture it, that we can cut a lot of the cost out of that. The main cost here is labor. It's the first time I've seen the, the panels actually assembled together. It's, it's a really good feeling. It's quite exciting. I, I saw the, the ribs themselves when they came into the workshop, and that in itself was quite exciting because it started to give you some scale on the thing. Um, and I'm looking forward to being inside this thing myself and actually sort of experiencing it from the inside. It's, it's going to be great. Uh, I'm doing it as cheaply as possible, but it has been expensive. Uh, the, the grant that's just coming to an end has been over a quarter of a million pounds. 
and uh, we've done very, very well to achieve what we have done inside that budget. Uh, and probably to do, to do a, a serious exercise involving actual storage of energy, what we're really storing now is compressed air. To, to really store proper energy, we're probably looking at a million or two to do a decent sized project. Okay, nice and easy, hand over hand, up to the surface. Oh, a million is a very small amount of money in the context of the energy business. It's a very, very small amount of money. So it's a matter of uh, winning over hearts and minds and demonstrating to people how important energy storage is. And, and that's coming up the agenda. That's what really is exciting at the moment. Energy storage is coming way up the agenda very, very quickly.